warming up our pans back there on the stove. So they are ready when we are, right? Thinking ahead of the game. Now we've got a beautiful onion here, and we are going to caramelize some onions. Toasted beef and caramelized onions. Yeah, absolutely wonderful. So let's go ahead and split this onion down and cut some slices and get that ready to go. Before I get too far in front of myself, I'm actually going to add a little bit of uh, olive oil here to the pan as well. I think we'll do the onions in this one. I've been debating for the last 10 minutes before we went on the air which pan I'm going to use for what. And I got news for you. It doesn't really matter. It could be either one. <laughs> but I've had the internal struggle, and it is real today for some reason. <laughs> it's okay. And you know what else? I've yeah. got I've got songs coming into my head tonight, too. Oh. It's, it's Friday. Oh, no. It's just a messed up Friday in my brain. But I'm just like... For some reason, I've got Kitch and Phil Collins working together tonight. I'm like, oh, think twice. Hey, babe. Yeah. It's Saturday. That's probably why it is Saturday. <laughs> it's not Friday. Wow. <laughs> that just shows you where, where I'm at. All right. So it's Saturday. Happy Saturday. There you go. <laughs> wow. Winter has got me messed up. But what is not messed up is we got our onions. We've got them split in half here, keeping the root end on. And we are going to cut uh, the ends off here and throw these ends into our compost bin. We are composting because we are hip and with it, kids. We're also working to make our topsoil absolutely beautiful for the outdoor growing season. And we're going to go ahead and cut some strips here in our onion. Let's give you that bird's eye view. There we go. And we're going to go ahead as evenly as possible. We want some decent sized quarter inch strips that we're going to do here. We keep the root end on our vegetable so everything stays together and nothing fans out as we're cutting it through. Now we're going to come back across and that's it. How easy. Onion prep doesn't have to be as hard as we make it. And I used to make it very difficult before I really got into the culinary world. Trust me, I've, I've cut an onion every way that you're not supposed to. But that's been a long time. Since it has. Been. It's, been, it's been a long time. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are still in that position, right? So number one, keep that root end on so it's easier to work with. Also splitting it in half is uh, absolutely wonderful uh, because it doesn't start splaying out everywhere when you're working with it. And it's that quick. It's that easy. Our onion is prepped. No more tears. There we go. See, Ozzy Osbourne coming through on this Friday, Saturday night <laughs> it's both nights for me at once we're getting that uh olive oil heated up over there so let's continue on with our prep we took the liberty here we've got some mozzarella cheese right there because you can't have a toasty beefy cheesy sandwich without some beautiful cheese uh and this is really great mozzarella cheese it's like an ethically raised there are differences in cheeses there are all shredded cheese and blocks of cheese are not created equally i'm telling you so true when you find a good brand you'll know. You'll be like, oh my gosh, I've never tasted anything so wonderful in my life. But we've got that <laughs> pre-shredded here, uh, ready to go. We've also got some mushrooms. We've been using a lot of mushrooms, and we do use a lot of uh, mushrooms in our cooking. It really brings out the flavor in dishes and adds such a great health element and umami flavor. So we've got some beautiful mushrooms. Also pair excellent with onions and our beef, okay? So we've got that ready to rock and roll. So let's go ahead and slice these down. Mostly moisture, so we want to be careful when we add these in on our cooking time. The biggest failure with mushrooms comes from, as well as a lot of things, and we've talked about this a fair amount over the last week, is overcooking our items. Whether that ends up being a vegetable item or a protein item, uh, overcooking is our biggest downfall when it comes to dishes not turning out. So we're going to go ahead and just slice these through and get those working away. All right. There we go, rocking and rolling. Now we've been featuring a lot of recipes uh, with not a lot of ingredients, whole lot of flavor, but also that don't take a tremendous amount of time to do, right? Uh, there's a lot of great, uh, great cooking videos across the internet. Uh, and the biggest problem that I have with a lot of them and great quality stuff, fun to watch, great, all that. But the practicality of a lot of the recipes is like if you've got kids and your job and everything else that's going on uh, on any given day, you know, you don't have time to do these, you know, 18 step rare ingredient recipes. So we really try to give you stuff here that is uh, cost effective, time effective, and of course, 
flavor effective, right? We're trying to hit those big three marks here. So, you know, you got a busy week night, you know, you got to get uh, Billy off to soccer practice and Lucy off to dance recital and you got to feed everybody. You can do these recipes real quickly, right? That's the goal here. Without sacrificing flavor. Now we've got this should be heated up. Oh yeah, we're doing good. That olive oil, coat the bottom of the pan there and let's flip that over in the corner and let's start getting our onions working down in the pan, right? All right. We're going to break these up here. We're going to start working these down. Now, let's talk caramelized onions for a minute while we're getting these going. We got a little bit of a little bit going on there, a little bit of a sear uh, sound that we've got going. Uh, caramelized onions, right? If you're doing a true caramelized onion, all right? Uh, or like an onion jam, caramelized onion, any kind of that variation. To do that truly and effectively, you're looking at an hour's worth of time, all right? But thank goodness, oh, your old friend Montana Max is here tonight to show you how to get that same effect in half the amount of time. It's actually going to be less than that. We're going to do a quick caramelized onion. First thing, though, is we got to get these into the pan, and we're going to add a little bit of butter as well here. Jesse James, hello. Well, I'll be if it isn't our outlaw celebrity friend, Jesse James, coming in. How are you, my friend? Butter in the pan. What's going on? What's crack a -lackin'? Jesse James says, sorry I'm late to class, but again, I'm an outlaw, so don't expect much from me. <laughs> <laughs> always, always sneaking in the back of the classroom. Always. Sliding into that desk. Maybe you won't notice. Yes. It's good to see trouble. you, brother. He's Happy trouble. Saturday. So I just discovered it's Saturday today. It's not Friday. That's right. But to be fair, I did have to look it up just to double check. <laughs> so that just shows you where Jen and I are. So don't feel bad, my outlaw <laughs> friend. Uh, but we were operating the last few hours of the day in Friday. So yeah. <laughs> All right. We've got some butter in the pan there. Let's go ahead and flip that over. There we go. Onions in the pan. We've got some butter in the pan. Let us know, you guys, what you guys are having for dinner. Are you cooking tonight? You cooking tonight? You taking the night off? Always a good night for pizza on Saturdays. Yes, and Fridays. And Fridays. <laughs> and really any day that ends in Y. All right, we're going to get that butter melted down here in the pan. And we're going to get the heat up on here. If you're doing a caramelized onion in the traditional fashion, it's low heat. It's low heat, and it's taking time and standing there and working them and stirring them. We're gonna we're gonna work this a little bit faster here though today. Okay. There we go. We've got that working down here. And I I forgot. I'm gonna show you a uh, uh, caramelized onion jam accelerant here. So excuse me for one second as I walk over to our pantry of doom, and I'm gonna grab a couple quick ingredients here that are gonna really uh, help accelerate the process as well as flavorize the process. All right. All right, onions going, mushrooms going. Let's go ahead, let those do those their thing there for a few minutes. We're going to be using a medium high, medium heat here to get those going. Let's come on back to the cutting board right there. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead now uh, as well, and let's get a couple of our buns ready to go, right? Sandwiches require some sort of transfer device to get to your mouth uh typically a bun or a bread object not always but typically, quite a bit of the time typically yes typically so we're using uh lovely ciabatta ciabatta rolls here and we've got to slice these bad boys open so we're going to get our serrated blade out here jesse james says i'm doing well i hope both of you are doing well my mom made liver for dinner bless <laughs> Yellow. LOL. <laughs> hey, hey, you're not having to cook. I mean, take a, take the win, right? I don't know about that. That's <laughs> I don't, one thing I, I don't, don't know about that. <laughs> All right, we've got some lovely ciabatta rolls here, uh, and this is uh, we're gonna slice these right down the center there, and create a top and a bottom ciabatta. Right, great bite to it, great texture to it, lots of air pockets which we're going to take advantage of. All right. We're going to, yes. Jen's getting excited. She's like, Ooh, air pockets. Yes. So we're going to, we're going to do that here in a moment as well. Bingo, bango. Let's go ahead and flip that over to the, 
the big camera there. Sourdough, another one of my favorites for making sandwiches because of, look at that, all up in your face, all that flavor and taste. Look at that air pockets in there. Awesome, Ooh. right? So we can use that to our advantage, okay? We can use that to our advantage. And we're going to do that by uh, toasting these up. We're going to toast them up and we're going to add a layer of flavor. Back over to Onion Cam. Make sure we're moving them, right? Make sure we're moving them here. And they're starting to shine. They're starting to glisten. We're doing good. We're doing good. Let's add a little, little magic to them, right? It's kind of magic. A little mountain magic going in the pan here. From the Montana Max Barbecue Store, right? One of our beautiful seasonings. This is our all-purpose right there. Whoop. Get that label right. Bam. So we're going to add just a dash in there, get that start flavor it up there, all right? It's going to be making a, uh, an appearance later here as well, but we're going to get, get a little seasoning in there as we start to soften these, these onions up here. There we go. Make sure that seasoning gets worked all the way around the pan there, all those onions. Look at that. Look at that. Starting to smell good in here. Starting to smell good. Mm -hmm. Starting to feel good. It's all the things that are good coming along. All right. So we'll go ahead and show you that here in just a moment. But let's go back now. Let's go back to our bread here. And let's see if this butter is soft enough. Should be. Try a little bit here. Not quite. Not quite. Want to get our butter a little bit softer, so. So there's some in the uh, the olive oil butter if you would prefer. This. Oh yeah, that'll be spreadable. We'll go ahead and do that if I can find it. <sighs> would you like my help? It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. I've got ingredients for days. All right, here she comes. All right, onions are working good. I'm going to I'm going to start working on some acceleration here with our onions. Well, there's Kansas City Jen going to the Fridge of Doom. Say hi to everybody. Don't be hi. don't be rude. <laughs> My word. There you go. Oh, thank you. All right. We're still going to get the onions accelerated and then we'll come back to that. All right, we're going to get a little bit of a little bit of water here. Jesse James is asking, Max, do you like the soft part of the bread or the crunchy part? I used to take the off the outer crust in PB&J when I was younger. <laughs> I like both parts. I think they're both uh, both critical, okay? Both critical to the, the complete sandwich. You got to think complete sandwich. All right, I just added a little water into the pan there. We're going to also add in a couple splashes of apple cider vinegar here. Okay, it's gonna up your flavor, a little liquid in there. Now, here comes the good stuff, all right? We've got the savory aspect going on with that mountain magic, but now a little barbecue 101 for you. Uh, if you're a barbecue cook at all, you should have this on hand at all times. We are gonna add in a couple tablespoons there of brown sugar. Yummy. Yummy, she says, and indeed it is. Let me give him the, the clapping away there for a little brown sugar action. All right. So that sugar, when it starts heating up, it's actually going to help <laughs> with uh, the acceleration of breaking down these onions in the pan. Uh, Parkin Studios is here as well. It says, mmm, tasty. Yeah, just get ready. Man, you should have been here yesterday when I was mowing down our cheeseburger egg rolls. I actually was thinking to myself how much you would have uh, enjoyed those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That he would need, he great... needed you to help eat them because there was a lot. <laughs> and I did sit and eat them all. Yes. Jen had I, hers, of course. You shared with me. But yeah, I but I ate too many. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. All right. Next time, Parker, you have to be here for that. For, for Yeah, we're, we're going to plan that. All right, we've got our ciabatta rolls here, and this should be a little bit uh, more spreadable. Uh, olive oil butter. He says, "Yeah, that sounds awesome." <laughs> they were awesome. They had 
course, cheeseburger in them and cheese and burger and pickles. onions and pickles. Special sauce. Special sauce. Oh. Delicious. And they were all fried and crisped up to perfection. It was and so good. And not greasy either. No. It turned out just perfect. Just right. Just right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to go ahead and just lightly, okay, lightly butter the inside of our ciabatta rolls here. Another alternative to that is sometimes we use mayo a little bit. Yeah, sometimes. you could use mayo just like you would with a, a grilled cheese kind mm -hmm. of thing, which if you watched our episode, right, uh, on uh, tomato bacon cheese sandwiches, the open mm -hmm. face ones that we did, yeah, uh, that's what we did in that one, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so I'm just gonna butter these down real quick, quickly as I can. And what's gonna happen here is when we toast these, it's gonna create a beautiful toasted crunchiness all the way across the sandwich, all right? It's gonna add a beautiful textural component to what we've got going on. So that butter is gonna work its way down into those nooks and crannies there and toast those edges and give us beautiful little flavor pockets, all right? Now we can do this ahead of time like we're doing now. We haven't even started cooking our beef yet and that's completely fine. Uh, and part of the reason that we can get away with that is because this whole sandwich is gonna get bundled up, all right? Bundled up, because we gotta melt that beautiful cheese. So the buns and everything's gonna be warm. So we're gonna get that uh, toasted away. Now, this is great, this is great, this is great. Let's kick it over to the stove. There we go. And speaking of that, look, we've got that bubbling going on now. We've got that sugar in there. We've got our Mountain Magic seasoning it smells in our apple cider. And now we're really starting to work and break those onions down to get them in a caramelized fashion quickly, right? This is a quick version of caramelized onion when you don't have an hour to spend just working butter and onions over the stove. But that's what you want. You want to get that nice little simmer action going there. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty, all right? Now, on the other burner there, you can see I've got that burner on. Right under the pan there, yes, happy onions. <laughs> Deserves the collapse. And what we're gonna do here. Jesse James is asking, what's your favorite kind of flavor? I'm more of a savory kind of guy. I am too, Jen's a sweetie. <laughs> Jen, Jen yeah. is a little sugar bee, okay? Yes, so we're a good balance. A lot of our meals pretty much have a little bit of each. For yeah, both of us. a little bit of each. And when we're talking about really setting your palate alive and really getting, I always talk about this. And when we teach our in-person classes, I talk about food as an experience, right? And I always get kind of giggles and snickers and like, oh, yeah, whatever. But then when I explain it and they're, they're like, oh, that makes sense, right? It becomes an experience. It doesn't have to be overly complicated to be an experience either. But in order to achieve that, right? You got to hit all those marks. You got to hit sweet and bitter and savory and spicy and all those things happening at once on your palate. So you want that, you know, you want that sweetness. You want that savoriness because they, they're, you know, it's like yin and yang. You want them working together. All right. So we got our pan warmed up here and we are starting to toast and we are getting some color already. I'm just going to press those lightly, right? We don't want to destroy the bun in the pan there. Uh, but we want to make sure that we get a beautiful, crispy, golden toastiness uh, from sea to su shining sea there, okay? We're going to a little plate out here on we can store them on too. And then we're going to get the beef going. That's why uh, you notice we got the onions going right away. And we typically, with most of our recipes, if we have an onion component, that's in the pan right away. That takes the longest time to cook. I've got some beautiful uh, beef strips here. I can show you that right there. Plate of beefy goodness. And this is a uh, uh, sliced ribeye, thinly sliced ribeye, right? So it's got beautiful fats in it. And it's a great way to use up, you know, scrap meat if you if you trim steaks and do that kind of thing. Uh, super awesome, super awesome. Uh, so that's all cut and ready to go as well. But that's not going to take long, especially when it's cut thin and in strips. I mean, we're going to sear that off. It's going to cook through real, real fast. So... Onions going first. We're going to get our buns toasted up here, which we're working on right now. Woo! Ha ha! And you can actually feel the texture, right? Mmm, feels good. All right, let's go ahead and get these out and get our next ones in. 
you don't want to overdo it, mind you. It's very easy to overdo. And then we're living in a place called Burnsville. Not to be confused with Burnsville in Minnesota, but... Oh, Ooh, yummy, so yummy. finally it's supposed to double. Max Watts in trouble, begging for a piece of that bubble. Look at that. So now we've got texture, we've got flavor, we've got it all. Well, thank you. I'll thank you very much. Let's go ahead. We're making Jenna's sandwich too, of course. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> good. She says, goody, goody. So we're going to get those ciabatta rolls in the pan as well. All right. And you kind of keep moving your onions every once in a while. We got that liquid in there. It's evaporating out. It's breaking them down. And we're getting flavor. I have, oh, I should follow the rules. <laughs> I have a yes, Kansas City, Jen. <laughs> do you have a question? <laughs> yes. Is this a recipe that you would do on the griddle outside if you were cooking outside? You absolutely could do this on a griddle top. If you're looking for an easy griddle recipe, absolutely. And when we're going to be toasting or melting our cheese and doing our final steps in the oven here, you can do that on a griddle as well by just using uh, a dome, right? We've got a dome that we use that's like a griddle dome. Then all it is is a metal bowl with a handle on it. Mm -hmm. If you don't have, you can, any metal bowl, flip it over or foil if you really want to. I like using a metal bowl uh, of some sorts when we're doing melting stuff on the griddle because you get that nice full seal all the way around to melt stuff uh, accordingly. But yeah, you could absolutely do this 100% on a griddle. No problem. No problem. All right, we're going to watch these here, and then we're going to flip burners, let our onions continue to work, and we're going to start cooking down all beefy goodness. And just a reminder, if anybody else wants to get onto the chef's table, you certainly can. And you don't have to have a, a video on if you don't want. You can just... Nope, you can do it with just it audio. Or on, whichever you prefer. And you can leave... Your mic can stay off until you want to talk. And you can just... Hit the hand button if you have a question. Or we had chat. several people uh, on a stream the other day that joined the chef's table and yeah. didn't say a word. And that's cool, too. Yeah, that's fine, too. Just of makes course. me feel like there's an audience out there, you know? Like, <laughs> but you're not just those, talking. Look at all those people getting ready to rock. <laughs> right? Something like that. All right. These are about done here. I just flipped them around. We got the, the uh, concave nature of the bowl there. Uh, so I want to make sure that we get that, like I said, that beautiful toast all the way across as best as we can that's looking pretty good let's go ahead flip that onto the plate there hot 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 give this one just one more second there yes toast just lightly press it down see how that looks that'll do that'll do all right toasted ciabatta bread I'm telling you you got burgers, you got hot dogs, or anything. Toast them up. It changes so much. People are so impressed with that simple, easy thing to do. Look at all that toastiness. Toasty! There we go. Yes, I know. I like toasty, too. How about you? All right, so let's go ahead, uh, flip our pans here. Keep those onions simmering away. We want to evaporate out all that liquid, right? And that just leaves the onions to absorb that, that brown sugar and the apple cider vinegar and the seasoning. That's all just working in there. They're getting nice and soft. And that's exactly what we want, right? The more time, the better on those. All right. Let's take a paper towel here just because I want to make sure we don't have any ciabatta crumbs in our pan that will burn. I'm just going to give that a quick, quick wipe. Oh, Jesse James, you are just fine. My speech isn't so good myself. I stutter and Dude, stutter all the time. We thought today so... was Friday. You are completely fine. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and if you just like typing, that's fine too. Yeah, that's totally fine too. All right, let's get a little olive oil in the pan here. Pan is hot, ready to go. Medium high heat. Get that coated out. And we got our strips of beef here. I'm going to grab some tongs. I'm kind of having to dance around a little bit because I've got my little uh sous chef parked right underneath me here oh is she under your feet yeah she's just chilling she's just having a good she old just trust you that you won't step on her yeah <laughs> i don't even trust me uh all right here we go back to the overhead 
Ooh, sliced ribeye. There we go. Yes, I know. Let's hear it for beef. It's what's for dinner. And this is some beautiful color here, right? Beautiful color, uh, nice red. Remember, we talked about this the other day too, is that there is no, there is not <laughs> such thing as bloody steak. There's uh, what that red liquid is that you see is a stain protein called myoglobin. Say it with me, kids. Myoglobin, all right? So there's no blood whatsoever in a steak. If you get a steak rare and it comes out, red liquid comes out, that's just water, H2O, right? Uh, stained with the protein myoglobin that's in the muscle, okay? It's just a stained protein water. That's all it is. There's zero blood in steak when it is served, okay? All right, let's get this in the pan. We should get a nice, uh, oh, let's flip that camera over so you can see it. We should get a nice, the pan's hot. We should get a real nice, you know, action sound, cooking action sounds. Yes. There we go. Play to myoglobin. Going in. Jesse James says overcooking meat is blasphemy. <laughs> And Parkett Studios says, what about hemoglobin? Hemoglobin is, is a completely <laughs> different thing. Hemoglobin. Now, you'll have to tune back in for the hemoglobin stream. That's a completely <laughs> different cellular deal. I love science, and we can go into that. But hemoglobin and myoglobin, they're both globins, but they are completely different globins. Oh, gosh. Now everybody's going to be Googling it. To, to Google. All right. Let's Google this. All right. Mount Magic. Let's go. Of the blood. Hemoglobin is part of your blood. But I don't know. I don't remember, actually. It's related to... It's a protein in your red blood cells that carries oxygen to your body's organs. Mountain magic going in using there our... Oh, thank you, Parker. <laughs> <laughs> yes, completely separate from the from the myoglobin, but both globins, <laughs> both, in a, both in us, humans as well, all mammals. And look how quickly we're getting that color change there, okay? Now, uh, I'm with Jesse James. Overcooking meat, right? That can be uh, that can be an issue, okay, for some people. But you know, if you like your steak well done, don't let anybody judge you for it. What you know, the internet is such a lovely place, and there's so many lovely people that have so many lovely opinions about how you should live your life. And I see it all the time in like cooking boards and barbecue boards, and like they're like, "You like your steak well done? Well, you're not a human. They're like whatever." You just live your live your best life. Live your life. That's what I'm all about here. All right. Jesse James says I need a little bit of both in me, the hemoglobin and the myoglobin. Yeah, just just a, di a dish of that and a dish of that. Look at we're getting some beautiful color there. We've got it seasoned up. We've got that outside getting a nice sear there, so that'll add some nice textural crust to it as well. We're gonna work that in the pan, and we're gonna get that cooked all the way through. Quick onion update. Woo! Look that liquid. And we got some nice color change there, and they are getting nice and soft. Remember, uh, I like a little, we're doing this as a toasty beef sandwich. I like uh, my onions to be a little larger in this kind of application, all right? Uh, they will quick, quick, they, they will cook quicker. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, they will cook quicker. Mushrooms you guys are so encouraging. Mushrooms going in the pan. Uh, they will go quicker if you cut them thinner. The one thing I will caution you is if you cut them thin, uh, you need to keep both good eyes on them because you can obliterate them uh, where they become nothing, right? They can deconstruct too much. Not impossible, not hard. Just keep an eye on them if you're doing that. You know, we got a rustic, beefy, delicious sandwich. So I want a good bite of onion here, which we gave the sweetness to. We got the savory to, and we got the texture. We got them working in the pan there. And I'm telling you, everything is coming up Millhouse. Gotta love it. All right. Just check on those. Now we got our mushrooms in the pan, right? Let's go ahead and flip that over in the corner there. Bingo, bingo. There we go. Mushrooms in the pan. And we're going to start working these in there as well. Last step, adding those mushrooms in the pan, okay? 
mostly moisture. They can break down very, very quickly. So we don't want them to also be obliterated, right? So we want to make sure that we just add them in, get a little of that mushroomy goodness, working with those beef flavors and the seasoning that we've got in there. We're doing these are up and smelling what you're cooking. Oh yeah. <laughs> you knew that was coming. We're going to turn that heat down now and we're just going to go ahead and let those mushrooms go. Now we really want to add some flavor here. We really want to add some flavor and I just have a hankering for some saucy goodness. You oh, like saucy goodness? Yeah. Do you guys like saucy goodness? I've got both of them in working in the kitchen. I Do some dishes or something, Luna. Let's go ahead and looking, head into the fridge. They're looking to make sure you didn't drop anything. I know. I never the, have to the, worry the about crew. cleaning the floor at all. <laughs> all the smells. All yes. the smells. Let's see. We might have used that other one up. I might have to even grow. Oh, no. Nope, there it is. All right, kids, it's time for some saucy goodness, and we're working with beef. So what do I have in my hand? Jen, you get one guess. Is that the high, wide, and handsome steak sauce? Boy, howdy, are you right? Yeah. Yes, it is. And we are going to add in here a little Montana Max high, wide, and handsome steak sauce. That's right, Ooh. available on MontanaMaxBBQ.com. And we are going to steak it up. Make no mistake about it. Absolutely delicious. But part of the reason I'm doing this is because our sauce, our high white and handsome steak sauce, is absolutely wonderful on any sort of vegetable as well. So we've got mushrooms, we've got beef. It's just why wouldn't you? So we're gonna add a little why bit wouldn't. of this in the pan and glaze this out. Perfect sauce to not only dip with, like I'll dip French fries in this, like I love it. Because it's not like a traditional like steak sauce. It's its own creature. But Montana Max's all-purpose root and toot and good for everything sauce just did not fit on the label. So we had to, you know, name it something that was akin to. I did get high, white, and handsome all on the label. Just so we're just go ahead, get that working in the pan. Low heat now, because we don't want to burn our sauce. Okay. So we just want to glaze these. Oh, I gotta flip this over. You gotta see this. You gotta see this. Look at that. Look at that color. Look at that. And now it's not swimming in it. We just want to glaze it out. Jesse James is asking, what is your guilty pleasure, Max? What? Your guilty pleasure. When it comes to the kitchen? Well, I would assume <laughs> that's what we're doing. <laughs> and quick onion update. Look at that. Oh, ho, ho. All the moisture That's is great. almost gone from the pan. These are looking good. All right, we're about ready to start constructing here. So I'm just going to make sure we got everything incorporated nice and easy. Heat down on that beef there. We can actually turn that heat off now. We're cooked through. Mushrooms are cooked. We've got them glazed out with high white and handsome sauce. Onions ready to go. My guilty pleasure. I will tell you my latest guilty pleasure when it comes to food. Food, Max. Food. Food. Duh. <laughs> so my my latest guilty pleasure uh, is this whipped cheesecake. That is so really good. good. So yeah. good and so horrible for me. All right. <laughs> but everything in moderation, right? <laughs> All right. We've got the tops of our buns. <laughs> We're going to make a sandwich. Tops of the buns right in there. Bottom of the buns right there. Let's go ahead and line that back over. There we go. We've got our buns ready to go. Let's go ahead and let's build a sandwich. Really great sandwich. All right. I can actually flip this over to the big screen. There we go. We've got our beef components here. You know what? Before I get too far ahead of myself, I'll go ahead and put that back. Wow, I, I am quite tickled with what we've got going on here. Now, when we're making a toasty, beefy, cheesy awesomeness, okay? This is pro tip 101. We don't put cheese just on the top of everything and hope for the best. What we want, and if you want that Instagram TikTok-y worthy video of the gratuitous cheese pull, this is what you got to do, okay? This is what you got to do is you got to put cheese on the bottom and on the top, and then when we cook it, it encapsulates everything and all that beautiful cheese works together 
then when you pull your sandwich apart, you're going to get that beautiful stringiness, right? Ooh. That ever yes, I know <laughs> you're already getting excited about it. So that's what we got to do is we got to, you don't need to, you know, do a complete as much cheese as you'd like, but you don't need to do a, a mountain of it, but that's how we get that beautiful uh, gratuitous cheese pull is we do a layer of cheese on the bottom and then we do a layer of cheese on the top. Okay. That way it works through everything and it all melds into one delicious, super, not really nutritious sandwich. It's not horribly, uh, horribly bad. Montana says whipped cheesecake much better than liver. Yes, yes. that's true. <laughs> Jesse James, you need to reward yourself here with yeah. a little whipped cheesecake action. Target Studios says, oh, I thought it was just use Elmer's glue. Yeah, there you yeah. That'll do it. Food styling. Yeah. Those crazy kids will eat glue probably just for a video, right? <laughs> just to make it. They've ate a lot of things that have it's not hard. been good. Yeah, don't do that. Don't eat glue. No, no, no. The one that sticks in my mind was the trend where they were marinating chicken with NyQuil. Oh. And it do and that. that can actually make you kill you. Well, yeah, if too much of it, it can make you uh really sick best what case a scenario. Horrible idea. Horrible. Yeah. All right, so we're just layering on our beef and mushroom mixture here. Park it says lame fake commercial cheese pulls. Maybe they do use. Oh yeah, have style? you never watched any food styling videos? Well, yeah, I for guess. like ice cream and stuff. Like that's none Parker of that's real. None but... of that's real food. You know, that's all uh, fake food that they do. Well, that just ruins it. Because it when they're taking pictures, yeah. dear, and the reason why, and I can tell you the reason why, is when they're taking pictures of different uh, food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's under hot camera lights and sitting there for an hour or longer oh, on yeah. end so if you want like a frothy copy or something like that uh mm -hmm. it won't stay you know so you got to find ways for it to not melt under the hot lights all right here we go kids caramelized oniony goodness and they're all soft and awesome mm, that smells so good quick caramelized onion we're going to add that on the top here. There we go. Very, very hot, mind you. Anytime you're uh, incorporating sugar, like brown sugar or anything, into ribs or into a sauce, that sugar gets molten hot and it can seriously burn you. So you need to be careful when you have anything that's involving uh, cooked down sugar in it. Pro tip for the day, don't burn yourself with sugar okay back to the stove you go i might actually have enough to have two sandwiches tonight I might make one up after we get these rolling all right now jesse james says i agree max cheese on top and bottom cheese would probably cl close your veins but clog your veins but well worth it <laughs> <laughs> now uh what i'm gonna do here is i've got these grilling sheets And I'm going to go ahead and these are nice. I, if you're ever looking for uh, grilling stuff, pick it up at the end of the season. January, February, or December. I got this aluminum foil. It's pre-cut sheets. Ready to go. You just pull them out there uh, for like under a dollar for per box. So always buy off season if you can. All right. Cheesiness. Top it out. Top it out. There we go. Beautiful top goes on. Squish it down. And now we're going to fold it up. Just like so. Bam. And we have a space shuttle of flavor. <laughs> That's going to go onto a pan. Let's do another one here. Now, I've, I've heard this too, and I, I've i not scientifically tested this, but when it comes to tin foil, right, or aluminum foil, I'm old school, so I still call it tin foil, but there's a shiny side and a not so shiny side. This is not so shiny. This is very shiny. Uh, they say if you have your shiny side in, it'll mm -hmm. actually cook faster. 
I don't believe it, but you could test it. Being that there's no light inside when you fold it up, I don't necessarily believe it either, but I've heard that. Uh, never heard it. I'm but... not saying, I'm not giving this to you as a Montana Max fact of life. I'm just saying I've heard that. Call it a conversation starter. Jen yeah, is not I, impressed. I'm not thinking. I, I don't know. I'm I'm not no I'm not verifying this. Jesse I'm, James says test the theory. I always thought that the shiny side has, it should be out. I don't know. The dull side is in, right? I will write a strongly worded tweet to NASA after this and see what they think. That's who you need to know. <laughs> How do you properly use aluminum foil shiny versus dull side? When you're doing a space shuttle, do you use the shiny side out or do you use the matte side out? <laughs> Inquiring barbecue minds want to know. All right. There we go. We've got two beautiful sandwiches ready to go in the oven. The oven is set. The oven is set right now at 375 degrees. Now, this should take roughly five-ish minutes for these to uh, get to their finished state. So... We're gonna pop those in. And now I'm gonna set off all your timers. Alexa, set timer for five minutes. Now you can count down with me. All right. <laughs> Perfect. All right, let's have a little drink of water here. And so we're at 49 minutes into the show here. You can easily accomplish this recipe if you're not hosting your own online cooking show on kitsch.com, the food network for a new generation. You can easily accomplish this whole recipe in under a half hour. I would say 20 minutes tops. The longest part of it is the caramelized onions. Let's go ahead and uh, make one more sandwich here. While sure. we're waiting. You got enough? enough? Yeah, I've got enough to do one That's more great. quick sandwich. So once again, and then we can review everything uh, that we've done. Okay? Sounds good. Sounds good. We're gonna go ahead, get our ciabatta roll. And now both my both my skillets have stuff in them, so I'm not gonna to toast this one up. We're gonna we're gonna put a little olive oil on there and see how it does just when it's wrapped in the oven. This will be my test sandwich while we're waiting for the other ones. So let's get a little basting brush out here. Let's oh, no. do <laughs> what? Jesse's having to cancel his timer. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome, Jesse James. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to do a little brush with the olive oil on this one. We'll see see how the texture compares. I'm uh, always a big advocate of throwing it in the pan, throw it on your, your flat top or whatever to get that beautifulness. But we'll, we'll give this one a little test here, right? We give should always test. do tests. You love science. Science! All right. Don't and I'm going to need to get... Same thing. Do this... Recipe three different ways. Three different ways? Every time. Every time. Why not? Let's go ahead and get a little more shredded cheese there. Since I used all the beautiful cheese on the first two. All right. So once again, to review, we're using ciabatta rolls, right? We're using ciabatta rolls. The ones in the oven, we toast it up, uh, ready to go here. And then essentially there's basically four different main components to this sandwich, all right? First thing is we're using mozzarella cheese. You can also mix this, mix this up. You can mix it up with your favorite type of cheese at home. We start with a layer of that. Then comes our sliced ribeye beef mixture, which we went ahead and uh, glazed out with Montana Max Highway and Handsome steak sauce and marinade. Okay, and that also is where we cook down our mushrooms with the beef, okay? So we get all that beautifulness going on there. And I want to get all that, all those mushrooms out of the pan there. There we go. So there we go, beautiful mushrooms, beautiful slices of ribeye steak cooked down very quickly in the pan. Have you Not sampled much... the meat yet? I haven't. You haven't. Should I? You've been holding off. I know. I've been I trying think you to should. Be behave myself. Let's have a little taste. Awesome. And it's cooked. Like I said, quick, easy. Awesome. We're talking in moments, minutes. 
right? Mm -hmm. I gotta wash my hands here. Now that just made you more hungry, I bet. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so the first uh, thing that we needed to get going, of course, is our caramelized onion. Which we showed you Montana Max's way to do um, the quick and dirty version, right? We used brown sugar uh, as an accelerant here. And look at that beautiful color there. That's the first thing that we need to get going there. There you go. Need a little bit better light up there. But there you go. Nice, soft, flavorful caramelized onions. Like I said, normally if you're doing, you know, a true caramelized onion, that's an hour of cook time, right? That's an hour of cook time on those. And to quote the famous meme, right? Ain't nobody got time for that. Oh, you are going to love these onions. I just tasted one of those too. Every time. It turns out every time. Then once again, in order to get that beautiful cheese pull, right? Here we go. We're going to top that off with the rest of our mozzarella cheese. Just like that. So, and we also used, remember kids, uh, our all-purpose seasoning for our caramelized onions. And we also used it uh, to season our beef, okay? Our go-to. That's really why it's all-purpose. And then we're going to wrap it up. Now we're not trying to steam this or anything, so much like you would wrap up a rack of ribs, that can be a tight wrap in there. Keep that heat in there, get that stuff melty good. Alexa, stop. There we go, and it's time to pull them out. Let's see, you ready, dear? Oh, I'm definitely ready. Are you ready? Y'all ready for this? Bump, 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 beef, 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 toasty, beef, 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 toasty, beef, 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 toasty, beef, yeah. Y'all ready for this? <laughs> I'm ready for this. She's ready. Yes. Somebody else is ready too. There's emotes flying everywhere. All right, let's get these onto the cutting board. And then I can throw the one I just created into the oven. Get that all meltified. All right, I'm excited. Are you excited? Yeah, let's see it. Let's see it. Let's do it. Let's hopefully that should. Uh, be melted all the way down. All right. The moment of truth has arrived. Oh boy. Oh yeah, that cheese is melty. I can see it on the edge there. <laughs> and the bread gets soft. Ooh. I'm gonna cut this. That's that's how we really do it. But yeah, that cheese is melted. We can use another 30 seconds or whatever. But let's go ahead and slice it on the diagonal. Mushrooms and onions all falling out there. Oh, boy. Oh. Looks I sliced delicious. through it. Yeah, it looks really good. All right, sweetie. You know what time it is. Time to taste. It's time to taste with Kansas City Jen, the one, the only, ladies and gentlemen of Kitsch.com. Please welcome her to Kitchen Arena. Oh, my God. Kansas City Jen. <laughs> Jeez. And all of our dogs that are like, I smell beef. I smell beef. Ooh, this looks yummy. Mmm, so hungry. Juicy. Mmm. So what do you think? Mmm. A little bit of that crunch too from the toasting. Great. Flip this over. I can give that side angle here. There you go. Mm. Toasty, beefy goodness. Top is soft. Inside is crunchy. We've got all those textural components. Well, there's the cheese pull. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's there. Mm. It's there. It's good. We're positive. Wow. Mm. Well. I just made a mess. That's all right. It's a toasty beef sandwich. You can do that. Mm. All right, kids. It's that easy. Basically, four ingredients besides our sauce and seasoning. Mm. Beef, cheese, mushrooms, onions. 
Really yummy. In the ciabatta rolls. But mm -hmm. super easy, super tasty, nice, warm, lots of different texture, and ready oh, to go. So good. And like I said, if you're doing this at home, you can easily rock this recipe out in a half hour's mm. time. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here tonight on Kitsch.com. Special shout-outs to Jesse James and Parker coming in hot today on a Saturday. Yes, it's a Saturday. On a Saturday. So thank you, everyone, for being here. Mom Tan is here as well. Special shout-out to Mama. Yes, uh, so thank you, you everyone. Uh, if you are just lurking there, thank you as well for being there. Make sure you hit that follow button, and we've got a bunch of streams coming up. And save your spot. Every time you click save your spot, you'll get a lovely notification uh, right before the stream goes live. So you mm -hmm. don't miss a delicious moment here on Montana Max Barbecue TV. Also, if you don't follow us on Facebook or Instagram, check out the links below and our website as well, www.montanamaxbbq.com, where you can actually get all of our sauces and seasoning shipped right to your door. Mm -hmm. I am Montana Max. This is Kansas City Jen. And as always, for those about to cook, we salute you. We sure do. We'll see you all tomorrow. Have a good night, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye. See you tomorrow.